My name is Todd Lipp. I'm a Senior Solutions Advisor for Rocket Software, and this will be part two of an overview of Omegabon Monitor for ZOS. We will be digging a little deeper into potential performance issues, discussing potential actions to be taken, and reviewing the recently added System Programmer's Toolkit. You'll notice that the menu here has 13 options, and then it continues because there's more. So we're going to go look at a couple on the next screen here and dig a little deeper into the, the next screen. Let's take a look at the bottleneck summary, which is option one here, or B. And this is just an address-based bottle, address bottleneck summary for the whole LPAR. And we'll see a bunch of, um, you see all the address spaces and just kind of how they're performing, who's using CPU, who's waiting, you know, some idea, maybe what's holding up the task. Another item off the secondary menu, which is, which is a new feature that we want to talk about in just a few seconds, is the Systems Programmer Toolkit, option number 11 or M off the menu here. So the Systems Programmer Toolkit is an enhancement that was added at the request of some customers to, to give the operator some basic interaction and operator functionality built into a Megamon so that they don't have to always pull up a terminal or 3270 to issue some commands. One well, of the first features to, to show here is the, the command console. So in this particular interface, you can issue commands directly to the console. And I'm gonna say D iOS config. And it's going to return my response right here below, and similar to how user log would work in SDSF. But then you're also going to see my response return to the opera log right here. And the another feature that was added that is kind of a convenient way to get to some of your system data is the SDSF interface, or a version of SDSF has been brought into the Omegamon toolkit. So we open up SDSF. And by default, you're going to get some limited options here. So let's talk about the options tab. Go into options, and there's a few options you can save here. I mean, you're going to have maximum display lines value. How much history do you want to pull up in your upper log interval? And you want to probably be a little careful here until you figure out how much resource this ties up. By default, we're just keeping the last minutes for my demo purposes, but you, you might decide you want to have five or 10 minutes in here. I will support up to 999, but you aren't going to want to keep that much history here. Current line at the bottom is, is an option. You can have the most current line at the top. And if you want to do that, you want to say no. Current line at the bottom, no, which will bring the current line to the top. And under SDSF, if you want to see all the commands available in SDSF through Omegamon, you're going to change this to a yes. Now you'll notice when we go back to SDSF, now that you see a whole lot more a lot more options show up. You'll notice all the things that you, you see in SDSF, including the DA, the input queue, initiators. If you want to do your prefix, you do your prefix up here. If you don't want anything for a prefix, you'll just give it an asterisk, just as if you were in a regular SDSF panel. And then when they come into the input queue, for instance, I remove the prefix, I see everything that's running. Now, this is a read-only copy of SDSF. You can't release jobs here. You can't purge jobs here, but you could issue commands at the command line here to do some of those activities. You can collect and keep your messages or your re commonly entered commands right here. If you want to do some cleanup, hit a slash as always, give it an S to issue the command, and again, S is your default, or you can do a D to delete the command and take it out of your command history. So what we're going to go look at now, and is one of the last options I want to show on the secondary menu underneath this before we go into the, the default menu. We're going back in, and we're going to hit a slash. We're going to go to 14 to hit the secondary menu, and we're going to look at enqueues. And we're going to see why we have a red threshold warning on the previous screen. We have a job that's been waiting for a long, long time for exclusive on these data sets that all the Omegamon tasks have and share. And this is deliberate just to create a warning on the screen. One of the last screens we want to look at or the views we want to look at under the LPAR screen is also the default selection if you just type S. And it's the address space screen. So we're going to go to the address space screen and it's just address space overview and it's everything that's going on with, with your address spaces. And you can see we have a job that's using an awful lot of CPU that's floated to the top here. Now I'm going to enter head enter a few times. I'm going to bring my ISO MDS and my ISO MTOM address spaces, which are my Omegamon tasks, also to the top of the screen. And we're going to go and we're going to look at a couple of things inside of here and see what your options are from the address space list. 
So you have a variety of options here. We can get some CPU details if we want to, and that's our default. If we were to issue just an enter or an ask, that's our default. We're gonna get address CPU to usage details. And it's gonna tell us that our overall job CPU time and our SRB time, TCB time, whether or not we're using zips, all that kind of stuff and all that level of detail. We have a case here where a job is obviously using a lot of CPU and I can tell you it's just using CPU because it's looping and I deliberately made the job loop. But you have a couple of options here that you wanna deal with that job, right? I mean, we can take a do a take action on the address space, which is an exclamation point. And we can cancel the address space and we can cancel the address space with a dump, restart it, we can kill the address space, we can reset the service class, maybe it's, you know, if we just want to swap it out, we want to give it more resources, whatever we want to do, or we can issue a cancel. We go back to the previous screen, we also have just the option of canceling the particular task. We can look at the bottleneck analysis for this particular address space and see if we can tell what's going on, and you can see that it's using CPU a lot. It's waiting on CPU, and the CPU loop index is climbing. Uh, this is not at a point where we're going to see an alert, but this is the CPU index is climbing. And so we want to take a look at what it's spending all its time doing. Now we're going to go into using CPU and tab here, and it's going to give us the option of doing an inspect against the CPU, and it's going to get into a more granular level of what's going on with the CPU. So it's going to take a second because it's going to get some details about the CPU usage of the task and we return them. And you can see that it's going to tell us that we're running IRX and it and it's 100% CPU busy. It's going to tell us in detail what modules we're in and what percentage of the time we're in that module. So it's going to break down at the, at the module level where your, where your task is actually tying up using CPU. And in the end, we don't want this to stay out here, so we're going to go back and we're going to cancel it. So back to this, to this primary menu, we're going to issue a C, and we're going to cancel the address space. And now it's gone. For a better example of how to use the inspect, we're going to go to one of our Megamon tasks and bring it to the top by hitting Enter. So I'm hitting Enter, I'm causing the Megamon to refresh, and I'm driving the CPU to the top of the list. I'm going to come down, and I'm going to look at my CPU details for the task. my bottleneck analysis for the task, this timer wait, but also it's just doing some looping maybe. It, it, it's showing up non-zero in the loop index, so it, maybe, it's, maybe it thinks it's looping a little bit, but that's because I've been hitting enter. Going to CPU, and I'm going to run an inspect here. And you can see the detail level, right? I mean, these are the load modules and their respective percentage of the CPU that is being used by this particular task. And you can, you can get a pretty good breakdown as you look at this, really where a job might be looping, what module might be causing a problem. If you're seeing excessive CPU, you can kind of pin down which particular module might be causing the issue. So now remember that pesky job that was sitting out there waiting for an NQ. We're gonna go find this job and we're gonna show you the address space overview is one of the places in Omega Mon that you can do a filter. So I'm gonna filter by the address space name I'm gonna say EQ here, and the value is gonna be my TSO ID prefix, and we're gonna find it, see if we can find that job out there that was just sitting on an NQ and wait. I'm gonna hit enter with PF3, and now you can see what we've got out here. We've got my TSO ID itself, and then we've got my batch job, which we know is waiting. We're gonna take a look at the bottleneck for this particular address space, and it's swap detected, and then it's in the queue wait, and we know that. You know, we know it's waiting, but this is telling us that it's just not really doing anything other than waiting. And we're going to go ahead and get rid of this guy. And then once again, we're going to hit slash. And we're going to say take action. Because you can cancel from the previous screen as well. But what we want to do is just take a look at this menu again. We're going to cancel that address space. And now that job that has been just sitting out there waiting is canceled. This concludes my overview of Omega Pound Monitor for ZOS. Thank you for watching.